This unit is on solving applications using systems. A lot of times I'm going to be setting things up as a system of equations and not solving it. The setup is harder than the actual solving. So for number one, that's exactly what we're going to do. We have a guy named Egbert, and he has a total of 5,500 buckaroos, which he invested in two accounts. The larger amount is $900 more than the smaller amount. So we're going to write the system and move on. So I'm going to let x equal the smaller amount. And then I'm going to let y equal the larger amount. So we can call this account number one and account number two. All right, so we know he has a total of that amount of money. So if I add the amounts in those accounts, it has to equal $5,500. And then this second sentence, the larger amount is, the larger amount, y, is equal $900 more than the smaller amount. Ba boom And then we are not going to solve the system, but this one is easily solved using substitution. Next. The sum of two numbers is 76. Their difference is 52. Find the numbers. So I'm going to let x equal one number. and y equal the other number. So it says the sum is 76. So if I add them together, I get 76. The difference is 52. So if I subtract them, I get 52. And this one is easily solved using elimination or addition, that y's will automatically add out 2x is equal to 128, x equals 64, and then I can go back and plug in x plus y equals 76, 64 plus y equals 76, and if I subtract 64, I'll get y is equal to 12. So, conclusion, so for the conclusion, we say one number is 64 and the other is 12. If I add them up, I get 76. If I subtract them, I get 52. Moving on. Egbert always throws loose change into a pencil holder on his desk and takes it out every two weeks. This time, it's all nickels and dimes. The total value is $2.20. There are 28 coins in all. How many of each does he have? It's a lot of information, but we're going to break it down. First of all, we know that it's only nickels and dimes. So I'm going to write nickels and dimes because that's our label. The value of a nickel per coin is 0 0.05. The value of a dime per coin is 0.10. Number of coins. Well, we don't know how many nickels we have, so we'll let x equal the number of nickels, and y equal the number of dimes. But we do know that there's 28 coins in all. So I'm going to label this the total column. We don't need to label this because we don't have a value per coin because all the coins are mixed together. But we do have a total of 28 coins altogether. 
the total amount of money in nickels is 0.05x because you multiply the number of nickels you have by 0 0.05 to get the money. Same way with dimes, 0.10y. And we're told that the total money is $2.20. So the beauty of this chart setup or table setup is that the two equations are going to just pop right out at you. Number of coins, x plus y equals 28. And total money, 0.05x plus 0.10y is equal to $2.20. So now, now we just have to solve this. The second equation, I don't really like to see the decimals, so I'm going to multiply both sides by 100. So I will get, if I do that, that's going to eliminate my decimal. So it's 5x plus 10y equals 220. And the top is x plus y equals 28. Now for me, I would super duper like to eliminate it. And I'm going to eliminate y by multiplying everything through in the top equation by negative 10. I like multiplying by 10s because it's easier. So the whole system will now become negative 10x minus 10y is equal to negative 280. And 5x plus 10y is equal to 220. So these will cancel. I get negative 5x is equal to negative 60. x is equal to 12. 12 what? Nickels. So I'm going to write equals 12 here, and then we'll sum it up at the end. And then I would use this top equation to get the number of dimes. So x plus y equals 28. So 12 plus y equals 28. Subtract 12. 16. So now to do a quick check, you might want to check the amount of money. Well, 12 nickels is 60 cents. 16 dimes is $1.60. If I add them, I get 220. So I'm golden. So the solution recap is there are 12 nickels and 16 dimes for little Egbert guy. Next, now we're going to use, we're going to do a similar thing, same table setup. On buying a trip in Los Angeles, Egberta ordered 120 pieces of jewelry a number of bracelets at 11, and a number of necklaces as 14. She wrote a check for $1,530 to pay for the order. How many of each did she purchase? So here we go. We have bracelets. Yes, we do. And necklaces. And we have total. Do we have a price per piece? You bet you we do. The bracelets are 11 bucks and the necklaces are 14. Total doesn't have that area filled in. Number of pieces. We don't know how many bracelets. We don't know how many necklaces. But we know we had 120 pieces of jewelry altogether. So the total money in bracelets would be 11 times the amount of bracelets, which is X. Total money for necklaces, 14Y. The total money they told us was 1530. Boom! It stands out. Those equations can be immediately written down as X plus Y equals 120 and 11X plus 14Y 
equals 1530. Boom. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply that top equation. Let's multiply it by negative 11. So I get negative 11x minus 11y is equal to 120 times 11. Negative 1320. The second equation stays as is. So I get 3y is equal to 210. So y is equal to 70. So I'm going to write that there's 70. Good. And then x, I'm going to use again this equation right here. x plus y is equal to 120. So x plus 70 is equal to 120. Well, x has to be 50. So I'm going to check 11 times 50 gives me 550. I'll just write that right here, 550. And 70 times 14 gives me 980. And so when I go to add those up, I will get 1530. So the upshot of the deal is she bought... Fifty bracelets and seventy necklaces. Next, Egbert needs nine liters of a fifty seven percent solution of acid for a research project in molecular biology. He has two supplies of acid solution one at 72% and one at 45%. How many liters of each should he use? So he has a 72% solution and a 45% solution. And then he's going to mix them together. So now, concentration percentage is 0.72. Because that's 72% written as a decimal. Solution number 2 is 45% concentration. So we write it as 0.45. And we want the mix to have a 57% concentration, so 0.57. Liters. How many liters of each should he use? Well, he, he needs a total of nine liters. That's my mix. Or I'm going to write a total here. And then we don't know again. So the pure acid will be 0.72x in solution 1. 0.45y in solution 2, and the total concentration of acid in the mix will be 5.13. Where'd that come from? It's 9 times 0.57. So again, the equations leap right off the page, and we get x plus y equals 9 and 0.72x plus 0.45y is equal to 5.13. Okay, just like in the nickel and dime problem, I'm going to multiply the second equation through by 100, and at the same time, multiply the top equation through by a minus 45. So if I multiply the top by negative 45, I'll get negative 45x take away 45y is equal to negative 405. And then I'm going to multiply that bottom equation by 100y to get rid of the decimals. I can just make nice whole numbers here. Cancel these guys. 
So 72 take away 45 is 20. 7x is equal to 513 take away 405, 108. And so I'm going to divide both sides by 27, and I'm going to get x is equal to 4. 4 what? Liters. Now what's y? Well, this one is easy to solve because x plus y equals 9. If x is 4, then y has to be 5. You might not even have to write that out. Okay, upshot of the deal is Egbert needs 4 liters of the 72% solution and 5 liters of the 45% solution. All right, Fred and Barney row their boat at a constant speed, 16 miles downstream for two solid hours, helped by the current. Rowing at the same rate, the trip back against the current takes eight hours. Find the rate of the current. So here we go. We are going upstream and downstream. So, what do we know? Fred and Barney row their boat 16 miles downstream. So the distance is 16. I just write it in there. And they row downstream for two hours. Rowing at the same rate, the trip back against the current takes eight hours. But since it's the trip back, we know the distance is still 16 miles. Now we want to find the rate of the current. Well, going downstream, it's the speed that they're rowing and the current helps them. So there are actually two variables in this. The speed that they're rowing and the speed of the current. So when I go to do that, I'm going to let S equal the speed of rowing and C equal the speed of the current. Those are my two variables. So if you're going downstream, you're pushed along by the current, so the rate would be the speed that they're rowing plus the speed of the current. Upstream, it's the speed that they're rowing take away the speed of the current because they're getting pushed. There's resistance there. And in case you all didn't know, rate times time is equal to distance. So now I'm psyched. I have my two equations. If I multiply rate times time, h times s minus c is equal to 16, and 2 times s plus c is equal to 16. So let's distribute and go wild. So this is going to now be 8s minus 8c equals 16. 2s plus 2c is equal to 16. Let's multiply the bottom by 4. If we do that on both sides, the new system becomes 8s minus 8c equals 16. 8s plus 8c is equal to 64. The C's are gone. 16S is equal to 80. S is equal to 5 miles per hour. That's the speed of rowing, not the speed of the current. 
So, wah, 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 I need to find the rate of the current. So here we go. S is equal to 5 miles per hour. So now, let's plug into, it doesn't matter which one we plug into, let's use this one, the numbers are a little smaller. 2 times S plus C is equal to 16. So 2 times 5 plus C is equal to 16. So some of you can just already see that C has to be 3. If you can't, 10 plus 2C is equal to 16. 2C is equal to 6. C is equal to 3 miles per hour. So recap, rate of the current is 3 miles per hour. And this makes sense because the speed that they're rowing should be faster than the speed of the current, otherwise they won't get anywhere. Next. Okay, there are a thousand miles between Bedrock and Whoville. So I'm going to circle a thousand miles. Barney starts and walks. He starts in Bedrock and he walks towards Whoville. And Fred walks from Whoville towards Barney in Bedrock. They're going to meet somewhere in the middle. Would you agree with me that Barney's distance plus Fred's distance has to equal 1,000 miles because there's 1,000 miles between Bedrock and Whoville. All right, now we just fill in the table and rock and roll. So this one is more easily solved using a single variable. So this one, we're just going to use a single variable to solve it. So Barney and Fred. Let's call Barney's rate R. And then it says Fred travels one mile per hour slower than Barney. So let's call that R minus one. Good. The time that they each hiked was 200 hours. And we all know that rate times time equals distance. So Barney's distance is 200 R. I'm going to write that underneath here. And Fred's distance is 200 times R minus 1. So 200 times R minus 1. And that equals 1,000. They're not going to meet exactly in the middle because Barney's going faster than Fred. So let's do it. This one's a nice, easy one to solve. We love it when this happens. So 400R. So 400R equals 1,200. R is equal to 3. So Barney's walking at 3 miles an hour. Barney rate is 3 miles per hour. So what's Fred's rate? Well, 3 minus 1, right? Fred's rate is 2 miles per hour. So this is an example of where a system, we could write it as a system of equation. If we did, it would be Barney's rate would be x, Fred's rate would be y, but the relationship between x and y would be y would equal x take away 1, which I think, and then the other one would be 200x plus 200y equals 1,000. I just think it's too much. 
to do as a system. This one is much more easily solved as a single equation using a single variable. Okay, so this is the last example, and this does need a system of equations. I'll read the problem. Egbert rented a car from Yuha Rental, which rents the car model for a daily fee plus an additional charge per mile driven. Egbert recalls that the car rented for five days and he drove 300 miles for 178 bucks, while the same model rented for four days driven for 500 miles, cost 197 Find the daily fee and the mileage charge. So there's two things going on here. I'm going to let x equal the mileage charge. What does that mean? Cost per mile. And y equal the daily so let's write the first equation. 300 miles he went, so 300x plus, and he drove for 5 days, 5y, and it cost him 178 buckaroos. Same mile, he only rented for 4 days, but he drove that 500 miles, and it cost him 197. There's my system and I'm going to solve it. Here we go. I'm going to multiply the top equation by negative 4 on both sides and the bottom equation by 5. So negative 1200x minus 20y is equal to negative 712. 2500x plus 20y is equal to 985. So I will get 1300x, these wamba, is equal to 273. Divide both sides by 1300. And we'll get x is equal to 0.21. So the mileage charge is 21 cents per mile. Good? And we also have to find the daily fee, which won't be that hard to get. I can use either one of the equations. Might as well just use the top one. 300x plus 5y is equal to 178. So 300 times 0.21 plus 5y equals 178. 300 times 0.21 is just 63. One seventy eight take away 63 is 115. So I'm going to divide both sides by 5. So y is equal to $23 a day. So $23 a day. So that's Egbert. And then we can check it in the second equation by multiplying 500 times 0.21 plus 4 times 23, and if all is right with the world, we'll get 197, which we did. Now you can do all the problems in the assignment for this. Good luck and take your time. Ask a lot of questions of your instructors because you probably need to ask questions. And if you don't get it the first time, don't worry about it. The idea is to gain a perspective on this that you can do application problems in math. Good luck and do the math.